I went to my doctor one day one day because I, I needed something. I don't remember what I needed from him. I was wait, waiting in the exam room for him, and he came in. I've known this man for 20 years or better, and he came in the exam room, and he looked worse than I felt. And he walked into the room, and I said, Doc, you look terrible. And he looked kind of surprised because most people don't approach their doctor like that, I guess. And he said, I do. I said, yeah, you look terrible. I said, what's the matter with you? And he told me what was the matter with him. And as he was talking to me, I began to think, you know, this man is describing symptoms of mercury toxicity to me. And I said, have you got mercury fillings in your mouth? And he said, he said I don't think so. I've got silver fillings. I said, oh, those are mercury fillings. He said, they are. I said, yeah, they're 50% mercury. And for about 10 minutes, I described to him what a silver amalgam mercury filling is. And he listened. And after I got through telling him about it, I told him, I said, I said, Doc, don't believe a word I said. Go research that for yourself. Convince yourself either yes or no and take the appropriate action, whatever you think it might be, before you start treating yourself with more chemicals, more drugs, or anything else that you might do to make adjustments for how you feel and what's going on with you. And that was the end of that conversation. Well, about a year later, I was back to see him again, and he came in the exam room. Of course, he looked a lot better. It was a year later. And he said, aren't you the one that told me about uh, amalgam fillings? He used the right word. I said, yeah, I, I told you about that. I said, how do you feel? He said, I feel a lot better. I said, well, was that, is that subjective or objective? He said, both. I said, well, how is it objective and subjective? And he explained to me what he considered to be objective, his blood pressure readings, his cholesterol readings, those things that he could actually measure, and the subjective things, how he, how he felt, how he thought, and those things that he just generally felt better. I said, well, good, I'm glad it worked for you. And then he added a story about his brother. His brother was an attorney. He said, you know, my brother was a successful practicing attorney. And he said, in a very short period of time, my brother just seemed to go crazy. I said, what do you mean brother went crazy? He said, well, he just seemed to lose his mind. He said, you know, nobody in the family really understood it. He said, but you know, when I studied amalgam fillings, he said, I learned about the Mad Hatter. And he said, my brother behaved just like the Mad Hatter. He said, we had to institutionalize him before he died. He said, he died prematurely. And he said, if I hadn't cremated him, I would have him exhumed to see how many fillings he had. He said, because I can't prove it. He said, because we had him cremated. But I suspect that he had a mouthful of mercury because he behaved just like the Mad Hatter. And that was kind of the end of that conversation, that discussion. But I thought it was very interesting that the, the doctor had healed himself by taking the mercury out of his mouth. And not only that, but had projected what he had learned onto aberrant behavior that he'd seen in his brother, obviously very educated and well-behaved person prior to just suddenly hitting a bump in the road that changed his entire course of life.